Welcome. Thank you all so much for coming. Will you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have the roll call, please? Sure. Kellogg. Here. Shoemaker. Here. Vaughn. Here. Pullen. Here. Hofstetter. Here. Kahn. Here. Thank you. Okay, so I had to like delete out all of the rest of June, so it kind of moved us clear down. For the community calendar, a couple of new things. Um, July 30, 31st is the groundbreaking ceremony for the West Holmes New Elementary School at five o'clock. You can pass this around. Everybody can look at that. Um, Holmes County Fair is coming up August 5th through 10th. Um, and September 21st is Art in the Burg all day. And then the cemetery walk is at two o'clock up at the cemetery on the 21st. Um, the second part of Our Town Millersburg will be September 26th at 7 at the American Hall. Um, October 5th and 6th is the Antique Festival. Boo in the Berg is October 26th at 6. And then Trick or Treat um, all over town will be from 4 to 6 on October 26th. So those are the upcoming community calendar things. <coughs> um, I would like to thank Chief and all of our officers who assisted with the Bicentennial Parade and fireworks. Thank you so much for that. That was, that was a big deal. It was a hot day. <laughs> um, I would like to also personally thank Devon and Brad for coming and being in the parade and being up at the discussion at the courthouse. I really appreciate both of you being there for that, so thank you very much. Um, the Antique Festival Parade is on Sunday, October the 6th, so please plan on being there. We will be in, on the Bicentennial Float again like we were this time um, and bring candy to throw. And I talked to Jim from Mill Street Photography. He is going to do pictures on the courthouse steps on Saturday, October 5th um, of the Antique Festival at 4 o'clock for all um, elected officials. So that's the bicentennial things that are coming up. Um, are there any visitors wish to address council at this time? No? Okay. Can we have a motion to suspend the reading of the minutes, please? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Second. Pullen? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. And Khan? Aye. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, can we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Con. Second. Con. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Shoemaker. Aye. Pullen. Aye. And Hofstetter. Aye. All right. Bill Resolution 2024-14. I didn't understand that. Are there any? One more time, Kelly. <laughs> bill resolution. <laughs> Are there any questions on the bills? <laughs> Totaling two hundred fifty-four thousand seventeen dollars and seventy-two cents. Hearing none, do we have a motion to pay? I'll make the motion to pay the bill. I'll second. Shoemaker. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Vaughn. Aye. Owen. Aye. Hofstetter. Aye. And Con. Aye. Okay, Nate. All right, the Planning and Zoning Commission will meet this coming Wednesday. We moved it due to the holiday last week. <clears throat> We've got another change of zoning district request for the former laundromat property at 50 No Name Street. Uh, again, they're looking to go R3 to special use district, and what's proposed is a massage therapy slash fitness <clears throat> wellness studio in that location. AEP did their work on the pole relocation at East Jones Street and Worcester Road. Now we're just waiting on the phone and cable companies to show up to move their lines to get that <coughs> finished up. Uh, Pavement Technology Incorporated was in town, did their reclamite work on all the streets. They were going to do the cemetery, but the days they were here, there was a burial one day, so they weren't in there, of course. And then the next day, there was some tree work happening on the property on Fairview, but they were in the back. 
blocking the drive. So they called and asked if it'd be all right. They're going to be doing work in Loudonville and Worcester. I said we can fit the cemetery in on one of those days if that's all right. I said no problem. So uh, the budgeted items we've been talking about, nothing new on the loader. We did meet with a, uh, we've got plans out to I believe three or four different builders now. So we should be getting quotes back from them pretty soon on our storage building, hoping to keep that rolling. And I have not heard any other updates from clients other than what they had told us previously that they're weeks behind now. So hmm. they've got pushed back. So got some good news on our sidewalk project for next year. Uh, we've got the ARC funding, 112,000. So with everything else that we've previously been awarded in our allotment, our appropriation of 125, we can look at a $373,000 sidewalk project downtown. Again, I want to <clears throat> start at the west end, warp east, simultaneously put in lighting on this, on these blocks from here west. While we've got the sidewalks torn out, there's no better time. And if, if nothing else, get the conduit in and get them stubbed up for, we can look at doing lights another way if we have to, but should be able to include it. Any idea how far that will that amount will take us? I, I don't know an exact. I want to say it should. Don't hold me to this, but it should get us to the square. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm hoping. Okay. I'm optimistic we should be able to get to the square. That's barring any unforeseen snags, like there always is. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to give you an update on the Hebron Street pro property. The uh, CIC, from our last meeting till now, has had multiple conversations with the current owners and they did confirm they're willing to transfer it to the CIC for no cost. Uh, they just want us to cover everything, transfer costs and everything closing. So uh, Mark Leininger sent us an invoice from the CIC That's on the, that was on the bill resolution that you saw. So they'll have some startup money to be able to handle those things. The commissioners are also chipping in 12,000. Um, they're very excited. They're, they're on board. They want to, they acknowledge that this is a great project for them and us. So it's, I think it's going to be a good, good project. Hydro flushing is scheduled to begin next week. I wanted to get that out, let everybody know. Uh, if you get any discolored water, let it run for a few minutes. It should clear up. If not, give us a call. Um, and then also, Blake Judson passed his Wastewater 2 license. He has his license now. So congratulations to him and by the statute to get or by the ordinance, he gets a 10% raise. Congratulations to Blake. That's, that's not an easy task. And I do have, but would like to discuss personnel in the executive session. That's all I had. Oh, uh, I guess I'll piggyback on the 4th of July. Thanks to the street department guys for barricades and cones and all their work as well. Mm -hmm. Nate, was there, was there talk about, um, I, I can't recall exactly which group, it was the military group that was going to come in and play the band. Oh, yes, I'm and sorry. Then, yeah, Sue we, Dye had requested okay. Court Street. Um, yes. So I did talk to her. She had looked at the amphitheater. She would prefer it to be at the courthouse. She was pretty adamant about keeping it there. That's the Air Force Band, right? The Air Force Air Band. Air Force right. Band. Yeah. And I, one of the things they talked about was the band members come and they go into the courthouse or the maybe the commissioner's office and change. Like they have a change of, they have like a uniform that they wear so that yeah. while they perform, there's really not a facility at airports that would accommodate that. So I can understand that. Speaking so, of the amphitheater, though, have there been requests? To perform down there this year. Yeah, we've got we've been. got events scheduled. Okay. Um, there's a uh, home center for the arts is doing a class there. It's a multi-week. They're holding a session. I can't think off the top of my head what it is, but there that's on the schedule. There's there's one or two others. There's okay. I, I would say close to half a dozen things Good. have been set up to be there. Uh, if you remember last year, I looked for him to be reaching out any time here. We had a food truck vendor reach out about holding like a food truck rally down there. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a cool that'd something to cool. do. I think Bourbon does it like once a week. They have that place. Yeah. They have food truck vendors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it'd be nice if they could incorporate some yeah. kind of show or yeah. performance at the amphitheater and then have the food trucks there. I think that'd be well attended. And I think at the last meeting we had tabled Sue's request for yes. closing Court Street. Yes. So do we need a motion to? We would. I would make a motion to approve the, the closure of Court Street. Second. Hofstetter? Aye. Bullen? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Khan? Aye. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, Chief. Uh, many of you have probably seen me at a posting for uh, position. Um, Chris Jones, he was my new patrol officer, turned in his letter of resignation. His last day was actually July 7th. Um, I guess I'm not sure the formalities, if you guys have to accept it or not, he's already gone. Um, <laughs> but and I'm pretty sure he's not coming back. So um, I wish him luck. <coughs> he's a good officer. He, he's young. Um, he moved into something that's more in line with what he does in the Army. Uh, he's getting the opportunity to be a SWAT medic and then be a patrol mm -hmm. deputy. So uh, best of luck to him. And with that, um, you know, I posted for, for a replacement of him, but we also have budgeted for uh, an additional person. So while I'm looking for the one, I'd like to get council permission to go ahead and if we get the applications, um, and then have the opportunity to go ahead and hire that plus one. That's uh, something we've had budgeted for at least the last couple of years. Um, talked to Bobby about it, and we definitely have the money there. So um, that's something I'd like to, to get permission from you guys to, to do if we get any, get any worthy applicants. Other than that, I don't have any okay. Did we send anybody to Cleveland today for no. the memorial service? We should. Should, but I, I get somebody right now. I have I'm down an officer and I have an officer on vacation for a month. So sure. our, our staffing's <clears throat> right now. Well, I just wanted to say that I get the dockets and impressed with the um, traffic tickets. In the last three weeks, there have been over 60 of all everything screeching tires, squealing tires, muffler, speed. So thank you. The outreach at Walmart was very nice. You guys gave away pens and all kinds of stuff, and it was really, it was really neat. The power show, I don't remember what the date was, the end of June, out at the fairgrounds, we did a touch truck out there, um, and then Jeff and I believe Dan was down at Walmart for the outreach for the day, mm -hmm. and I have another touch truck scheduled the first, one of the first two weekends in August, it's before the fair, so the third, um, that's going to be a gateway fellowship. They do a, a preschool, pre but before school function, um, one of them puts it on and they, they requested us for a touch of truck, so we'll be up there from 10, 10 to 2, I believe is what the time is for that also. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Chief. Bobby. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, thanks for um, acknowledging the fi June financials. Um, it says on here to accept the 2024 budget, but what I really meant was 2025. <laughs> so um, if everything looks good there, um, I just need a, a motion to accept the budget. So, <coughs> I'll second. Vaughn? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Pullen? Aye. Khan? Aye. Okay, um, I'll be heading, this is just an FYI, I'm heading to an income tax uh, conference uh, the day after tomorrow, it's a three-day conference, um, and I'm planning to get really smart there, so um, <laughs> just wanted to let you guys know that. And um, lastly, as far as my things, um, we, we've talked about this briefly, but next year we, we have a full audit um, that's going to need to be done. And um, there's different methodologies of finding your, your auditor. And this, the auditor of state contacted us and said that we have the opportunity to extend, extend the contract that we have with the, um, with the company that's done our last several audits. So we kind of have that relationship with them. They know us, we know them. Things have gone really well with those audits. So what that does is if we accept that, or if you allow me to accept that um, contract extension, we don't have to start that bidding out process uh, with the auditor state to find us a new firm to do our um, to do our audit. So 
I thought it sounded good. I actually contacted a really smart former fiscal officer to ask what she uh, what she thought, and she said absolutely. She thinks it's a great idea, and that I should ask you guys if it's okay to go ahead and extend that contract. You need a motion for that. I do. I'll make yes. a motion to extend that contract. I'll, I'll second. second. Ooh, that was a tie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with Bob. Con. Yeah, okay. Hofstetter. Aye. Con. Aye. Kellogg, yes. Shoemaker, Aye. Vaughn, Aye. and Poland. Aye. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Bob? Uh, thank you. Uh, the first thing is the Akron Children's Hospital Memorial. I understand you have, have a copy in your packet. Um, I asked both uh, Kelly and I talked to Michael Wallendorf from Akron Children's and uh, I asked him, because it's not necessarily uh, that obvious, the reason for the memorandum of understanding. So I'm going to quote him, and this is what he said, that the purpose is to verify that the mission of Akron Children's Hospital is the same in Millersburg as it is in Akron, and to notify the residents of Millersburg that Akron Children's Hospital is committed to serve the residents of Millersburg the same way they serve the residents of Akron. So, and this just formalizes their commitment. Um, you know, we don't really have any obligation under the agreement except to allow them to provide services, which why we're here. Uh, so that's the reason. And so you need to authorize the mayor to sign that and then understand. So can I ask a question? Yeah. So, has this been going on for a while? I mean, have we been? Uh, I'm not sure when they opened the office. We were just contacted in the last month or so. Okay. From Akron Children's. And the office is, is it up at the professional building? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, yeah. And it, yeah. So, and is it, so has it just happened? No, they've been here a couple years. Uh, one Maybe. to two, probably. Yeah. One to two years. Okay. I, I This is the first time I was yeah. hearing about it when they called me. I don't okay. think we've ever been contacted about this kind of thing before. <laughs> right. No. And, and that's why I had to ask him what, what's the purpose of Yeah, what is? It, is it just largely ceremonial? I, I think it is. I think okay. it's to let people know that they have the service here and they're accepting new patients and it's for low income folks uh, that don't necessarily have Medicaid even. Hmm. Uh, so they just want to put it out there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, they should know. So I didn't know if you wanted somebody to make a motion at this point. I'll make a motion. Kellogg? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Poland? Aye. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Khan? Aye. Uh, the second thing I have is um, there is a settlement proposal with the Kroger Company with regard to the opioid settlements. Uh, settlement and um, so an authorized signer has to sign on the act of Millersburg in order for us to take part in that settlement. If we don't take part in the settlement, then I'm not saying that we're going to get money anyhow, but uh, if we don't agree to this, then there's no possibility that we're going to get any money from the settlement. So um, I've arranged it so that I can sign so if, if you pass a motion that authorizes me to, uh, to sign off on that, then I'll go ahead and get it. We have to get it to them by August the 12th. Is, is this a separate opioid settlement than the one that we had previously signed on to? It is. Okay. There are different defendants. Okay. And so this will come up. I don't know how many more defendants there are out okay. there. Uh, but yeah. And the theory uh, of the claim against Kroger is that they filled a lot of these opioid uh, prescriptions, and somebody should have realized that the uh, system was being abused and should have put a stop to it, and they didn't. So Kroger has agreed to enter into a settlement. Hmm. Okay. So if you want to. I'll make a motion. Second. Kellogg. Yes. Vaughn. Aye. Shoemaker. Aye. Poland? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Cotton? Aye. 
Okay, the last thing I want to update you uh, on the speed study, the, the situation, which we've been waiting since March, actually. Um, in March, I wrote a letter to Dave Toppin, and I said uh, there are three zones that we would like to have the uh, speed change. And this is how I put it in the letter, and I'll just restate it to you. Zone one would be from Jackson Street up to Walnut Street, just you know, past um, the, the curve. And we wanted that entire uh, section to be 25 miles an hour. As you know now, it, it's already 25 to Clinton. So this would be 25 to Clinton, up to Walnut Street. Um, now, Nate, you had done your study about the business. There was like a so the chief asked me to extend it, and I, I don't think we're going to have any trouble because it was seven and a half percent business right. up to Ool, so I'm sure that if we go up to one, it it's, it's, might be a little bit less than 79 percent, but I don't think a lot less. No. Um, so with regard to zone one and zone two, Dave said, we've approved that. You can go ahead and pass the legislation, and uh, the speed limits will be changed. The zone three is going to be the problem. Zone three, I said it was from basically Jackson to No Name Street. Uh, and I said that we wanted it to be 25 miles per hour. And, um, well, part of that is already 25 miles an hour. That's the problem. Um, he said, Dave says that under their present guidelines, uh, and I don't understand it, but he said that it would have to be at least 30 miles an hour, and because it's such a short stretch of 25, 30, 35, that according to their guidelines, it would have to all be 35. So, and, um, and that's not what we want. And, you know, I put in a letter why we don't we think that 25 is, is the right miles per hour because of the danger that that hill and the curve presents, especially for truck traffic and the park being there and all that. He understands all that, but he's bound by these guidelines. But the reason that I found out that they've been dragging their heels a little bit is because their guidelines may be changed. Uh, he said by the end of July, they'll know whether their guidelines are gonna be changed or not. So uh, zone three is to be determined at this point. He said we could go ahead with zone one and zone two. I didn't know if he wanted to do that or if he wanted to find out what's going on with zone three and then do them all at the same time. Uh, where's zone two at? Yeah. Zone two is from, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Zone two is from Walnut Street uh, north to the village limits. Okay. And that would be 35 miles an hour, which it is already, except as you all know, the 1954 study says it's all 25, so. so. I guess I wouldn't have an issue just waiting and doing it all at once. That's sort of what I thought, but if you wanted me to do zone one and zone two, I can certainly do that, so. Is everybody? Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's all. all right. Go ahead, do you have any questions over Thank you very much. Um, we have some upcoming meetings. Um, we have um, planning and zoning this Wednesday. Um, the business and housing was also supposed to be this Wednesday, but that got changed to July 31st at 6 p.m. So that is going to be when the business and housing um, committee will meet. And as you know, our next council meeting is August 12th at 7. So. That's what we have coming up before the next council meeting. Um, I'm sorry, there is a fly <laughs> driving Nate and I yeah. crazy <laughs> over here. Over here too. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. you had it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it's just making up, making the rounds. Um, see, there it is again. Okay, so the other thing that we needed to discuss was the letter to West Holmes Local Schools. Um, the Business and Housing Committee um, asked Bob to come up with this letter 
Um, we have had multiple discussions about this, um, and I believe that we will continue to have discussions about this. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention, and we will discuss that further later. Are we not going to make a motion to accept the letter and sign our name? Not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Um, are there any committee reports? No? Okay, we have some legislation. We have the third reading of ordinance number 2024-103 by title only, an ordinance to authorize the sale of municipal tangible personal property through the internet. Are there any questions? Do we have a motion to pass? I'll make the motion to pass. Second. Shoemaker. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Poland. Um, Hostetter. Aye. And Khan. Aye. Okay, we have the second read reading of Ordinance 2024-104 by title only, an ordinance vacating parts of streets and alleys in the village of Millersburg. Are there any questions? No? We have the first reading of Ordinance 2024-105 by title only, an ordinance amending the zoning map, zone territory of the village of Millersburg. Any questions? Okay, old business. I want to bring up about uh, our discussion about the tour buses. I was thinking Adam Street would be a better place than Clinton. I don't know how anybody else feels about it. By the commercial bank, their office over there. You I know, they got their parking lot and there's, you know, the parking right along the street, the other, the dentist office and whatever, they have parking in back. Why don't we take those off the street and use those? I think it'd be more, more convenient for the buses. I had an idea that I gave to Nate the other day, um, actually on North Clay Street, out in front of, I think it's still Killbuck Savings, out in front of that building, there are actually six parking yeah. spaces out there that never get used. Mm. I come to and from work every day and nobody parks up there. And so I asked Nate what he thought about that. He said he was going to go look at that because I thought, you know, it's it's right there. Well, and they just took the trees out right there too that would free up, you know, the bus wouldn't have to rip out tree branches or anything mm -hmm. if we'd go with that route. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it seems obvious after you look at it, but that, I think that's a really good spot. You're not sending them onto any side mm -hmm. streets mm -hmm. then they're staying on the state route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can what just I, get out. I'm sorry. What, no, I, go ahead. what I suggest is I still think if they let us know when they're coming, mm -hmm. if we could have some kind of a temporary sign that we could slip over mm -hmm. to say this is reserved bus parking mm -hmm. rather than tie it up the other 348 days of the year, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when cars could be parking there if they want to, if we know there's buses coming, we could put those out. Yeah. I mean, I, these buses arrive. A lot of these people, first place they're going to go, the restroom. Mm -hmm. So you got the courthouse right there. They don't have a restroom they, anymore. In the basement? They don't have a restroom? Yeah, 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 yeah you got to go through security. Yeah. 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 Oh, jeez. Well, I'll put porta potties out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, they said they're going to go six in there. Uh, six. I'm assuming they're still going to drop them off somewhere right, real right. close downtown. to downtown and then circle around and park, regardless of wherever we put this. Nate, is are six spots enough to fit two tour buses? Makes that be 120 feet, 120, right? 120, yeah, should be. Yeah. It, Most of the buses I saw were the 40 to 50s. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. That would be an idea if we ever end up with two at the same time, right. you know, or two from the same company, something like that. Mm -hmm have enough signage to cover. You know what's also nice about that is these people that are having, driving campers and campers that are getting parked in parking lots mm -hmm. and I mean, we're not, a common, you know, that'd be even a place if they're camping and going through, but they're not maybe gonna, it's gonna be a last minute thing because they're heading to the camp, camp place, but right. it'd be not, we just don't have anything.
think we need some direction. Do we look at a permanent site or do we look at temporary signage or do we, what do we want to do with it? I, I would say temporary signage until yeah. we see that there's a need for permanent yeah. posting. I mean, if we're, if we're talking 15, 20, even 15 or 20 days a year, that's right. a lot of other days that people can park there that, you know, if you're going to run into the bank, the loan department there, or, mm -hmm. or even bakers right. surveying mm -hmm. or for the Education Foundation, I mean, yeah. I'd hate to restrict it and then never be used mm -hmm. all the time. So if we could get some kind of temporary signage. Yeah. And I, I have to think that they know on the majority. I don't think there's a whole lot of random buses coming in and just deciding to stop here without letting somebody mm -hmm. know. I think that Eclipse Day was unique sure. because some, they were looking to driving to find where they thought the best place to end up for the eclipse was going to happen. I think that was yeah. unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I've seen a lot of buses out at the museum, the house museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but they have a parking lot there. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing those are scheduled. Mm -hmm. They know when they're coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think it'd be a stretch to find out, to get in the list of notify us when they're coming. If they want to utilize the if parking. If you want, mm -hmm. yeah, designated parking, we'll get you one. Couldn't we contact these tour sure. companies and get some representative to mm -hmm. talk with and yeah. try to work it out with them? Yep. Yeah. yeah That's what that. I was saying at the last meeting. The ones that have contacted me, I tell them to go over to Clinton Street and that's worked out well for them. Mm -hmm. When we know they're coming, we can plan on it. So yeah, we'll get into contact with them because if they can add Millersburg to their stops, mm -hmm. yeah. to their trips, to their plans, then you know they can do that. I also received a um, note from Dave Hall. He wanted to talk to me about that, so I can let him know that we're going to have some parking spaces for buses, and then he can reach out to his people too. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be great. Anybody else have any old business? I one update. Um, been going back and forth with the Pathmaster. We reached out to them to discuss the downtown signals. Uh, we finally got scheduled for the 25th. They're going to be in town. I'll meet with them. Um, they want to look at everything, look at what we're dealing with, and then come up with some proposals on what we can do to try to help alleviate things, traffic flow. That's great. That was on my list. In the North Monroe Street, or I'm sorry, yeah, well, Monroe Jackson Street intersection, we got a, a sign ordered with like a left turn only arrow sign. We're going to put it up on the signal on the mast arm to the south of the last, to the south of the south light, if that makes sense. Basically, out at the end of the pole to clearly designate that that's a left turn lane turning onto South Monroe. So between the sign that's back by Crawford, the lane markings will have this oh. third marking now that if they miss all three of them, I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Make it, a no left turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just do what they want. Yeah. People I'm just sure drive and do what they will. want. Uh -huh. at, uh, at the last meeting, we had talked about uh, the, the flagpole project that was uh, proposed for the, the South Y and it was requested to get additional uh, quotes for that just because the, the cost ended up being higher than what the initial just guesstimate ended up being and and so I talked to Dale Obringer from the, the Lions Club and and he had trouble getting anyone to come and, and give an additional one but he did get an additional one that ended up being basically the same amount as what the, the first one was so apparently it does cost thirty two hundred dollars whatever to to do that project. So we are kind of back where we were at the last meeting where we've got three options, stick to the original 1500 that we pro had promised, uh, update the amount or cover the whole thing. And uh, again, I guess I'm of the opinion that we have this coalition of groups with the Lions and the Eagles and the, uh, the Legion that are willing to put money into our property and that we should have something in it. And I don't have any issue covering the full amount myself. Uh, especially noting that we have 4.3 million of unencumbered dollars in general fund. <laughs> well, we don't have it. The tax people, the people Correct. that live here do. The, the and I'm only going to agree to the 1500. Okay. 
because I would if if I was going to give an estimate and I knew that somebody else had quoted 3,200, that's what I'm going to quote is 3,200. So because it was already done out there to know what somebody else quoted, but I, as far as I'm concerned, 1,500 is all that we agreed to. Okay. And and every penny that we bring in is not it's not our checkbook. It's everybody that pays taxes and everything we we speak for. That's their money. So 1,500 is all I'll agree to. I mean, it's our property. I don't have a problem improving our property. I mean, that's that's what it is, and if that's what the cost is, I think it was a little unfair that we demanded a private entity to to get a second quote because we read the first quote. So, how fair was that to the to the first first company? I mean, I think they it's a reputable company. We do a lot of work with them. I don't think they're gouging anybody. So, I don't have a problem paying the full amount. It's our property to approve. So. Where did we get the 1500 quote initially that was told? Uh, that was just kind of a, a verbal quote given. By, uh, by Millersburg Electric? Yes. Well, they gave that quote. So if they gave that quote, then that was what the quote was, 1500. I, I mean, they've been in business a long time, and they do, we do give them a lot of business. We do. So I, I think, think they could, the cuff, because they get a lot of business, I think they could give a little here. They get a lot of business from us. Explain again, Brent, what they're going to do down there at the Y. Uh, they are uh, they are running. There is existing electrical service down there, okay. and they are going to be running it to up above the wall uh, to, to for electrical to, to illuminate the flag wall that is there, and at the same time also add a couple of receptacles that will make the Christmas lighting uh, easier to maintain and and plug in down there. So it, it covers the trenching. Uh, they'll have to bore uh, to get over to the top of that wall, and uh, two two floodlights to light up the flag, and uh, and then the two fixtures. Yeah. So I think it ends up being like 140 feet of uh, trenching and extending the the electrical. And what tunnel. what was the cost for the flag in the fall? It was. Uh, that is that is being covered by the, the other groups, but that right, is, I was just curious to what the cost was on that. <sighs> It, it, it initially was eight or nine, but then I think Dale said that he had found a different company that was that was a little cheaper. That that was what they did. One of their specialties was flagpole installations. It, it was, was cheaper. Like forty four hundred so. or forty five hundred somewhere, it was, somewhere it in there. Considerably cheaper than what yeah. the, the first quotes had been. But isn't there there's light on that? I guess I'm confused about the trenching because there is there's power there's power there's on the wall. Yeah, but those are low voltage lights. Oh, so they're not. And they need high. They need like needs to be one flag, right? Yeah. Right, right. Any other discussion? I I agree with Councilman Vaughn on. The expense of that being paid for by the village. Would anyone like to make a motion to? I'll make that motion. Should we wait till the last consent? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't understand. Should we wait till the last consent? Yeah, I think we should. Um, I didn't. My attention was this way, not that way. I make that motion. Okay, did one second. I'm sorry, I missed it. I'll second it. Okay. Vaughn. Aye. Con. Aye. Kellogg. No. Uh, Pullen. Aye. And Hofstetter. Aye. Sorry. Aye, back there. Okay. I. The other old business thing I had, I wanted to update you for, um, most of you wrote letters for the Troy Balderson grant. Um, I heard back from Javen, they received 63 applicants and they only send 15 to Washington to get um, financed and ours was one of the 15 that got sent. So we will find out in September um, how much money we received from that 
they seem to think, and this is what they said, because in that grant we asked for $500,000. And uh, he said, because we asked for so little, it's highly likely that we would get financed for that. Well, we would get the grant for that. And I said, that half a million dollars seems like a lot of money to me. <laughs> and uh, they said, well, a lot of the other ones that got sent were anywhere from three to seven million they were asking for. And so because ours was for 500,000, that it was um, likely that that's what we would get. So we'll find out in September, but I was very excited that they sent that on and that that is um, going to be discussed in committee in Washington. So I thought that was great. So, it, so being sent to Washington means it's going to get fund. It's guaranteed to be funded in some in some, some capacity, okay. in some capacity, and we'll Very find good. out in September what that was. They said last year all the ones that Troy sent were funded. Um, some were funded at what they asked for, and some were for a little bit less. It just depended upon how much. So, I have high hopes. So, that's exciting. That'll really help the old Worcester Road water line project. <laughs> Um, new business. Anyone have anything for new business? I had a couple residents that are experiencing deer problems. Um, evidently we have a herd living at the cemetery. Um, so I talked with the Holmes County game warden. He had multiple ideas to alleviate that situation. Um, interestingly enough, Irish Spring soap cut up and put in your flower beds will keep deer away. Um, so that, that's one, one option. He said deer hate it. So I, I have it in my mailbox because it also keeps spiders away if anyone was wondering about that. Um, there's also a liquid called Liquid Defense Deer and Rabbit Repellent. Um, you can spray that around human hair sprinkled around. So if you want to call your your beautician or the barber and get some hair, they they hate smelling that. So get some of that. Um, and interestingly enough, fishing line. He said deer have um, their sight. Their eyes are more farther out, so they can see a lot. But if they hit something and can't see it, it'll spook them and run the other way. So if you put out two lines of fishing line um, at, on your property, that the deer will stay out of your yard because it will freak them out. Um, so those are some easy ways to keep the deer out. He had some other options, but he suggested we try these options first and see how that works. So for any of you having deer problems, get some Irish Spring, I think. That and then they're just gonna go to another neighborhood. Right. So. We get Irish Spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and other, other people are having, I was in Gambier for a week, and, and they have a lot there, too. And I would assume there's a couple of things. I don't know if many people hunt anymore. I don't know. We've had a couple warm winters. But can they be rounded up and taken? Can the, our natch, can, our, can the state come in and round them up and relocate them? No. Okay. There, there are other options, but it doesn't involve oh, yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. And so this was the, the least invasive okay. options. Okay according to the game warden. Um, it, it has been brought to my attention that our fire hydrants need painted. Um, the last time that was done, was it scouts that did that? It was an Eagle Scout. An Eagle Scout did that. So if we have any scouts looking for um, a project or any other group interested in doing a public service project, uh, our fire hydrants would be a great project for you. Um, How many the, do we have total, Nate? Did, did they do all of them the last time? I believe so. Okay. I don't know the number off the top of my head. I would guess three, four hundred. Okay. It's a big project. Do you wanna do you wanna do that? Do you I think I have to work that day. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, why wouldn't that be a good community service job? Yeah. It would be a great so community the, service the job. Community service job. It would be a great community service job. So mm -hmm. maybe the Judges, I mean, a few years ago we had a guy painting curbs for us. Okay. That project. I See, I think that's a, I think that's a, an idea that we should. I don't know, community service, painting those. That would be great. So. Yeah. I'll just say that the last five, the the guy that did the curbs was great. He showed up every night after his job and he painted curbs okay. until they were done. And okay. Did a good job. 
Other than him, probably the last six showed up. If they showed up, they didn't make it a full day. Well, why don't you let me be their taskmaster? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put. Why don't Andrea be Kellogg the? In charge of that? I'd be willing to. to that. Okay, <laughs> let me be the one to make sure you that can't they force them to do it. So it's on them if they don't do it. <laughs> no, nope. but let me make sure they do it right. So we were we were talking about um, painting the fire hydrants at Meadow Glen, a couple of us mm -hmm. were one day. Mm -hmm. And the question came up, would we have to get permission to do that? Yeah. And I said, well, that's the route that I would take. And I assume that there's a specific color of paint that you would need to, because I actually thought about doing it myself. I think there's like four yeah, fire we'd, hydrants. Yeah, we want to keep them all uniform. uniform. So if, if that's something that was decided to happen, I'd come to you and yeah, work with you yeah. on that. Okay. Yeah. Or anybody who would want to do it in their neighborhood. Yeah, if any neighborhood wants yeah. to get together and mm -hmm. do that, I think that would be great. I remember back in 76, for the American Bicentennial, they painted them all patriotic. Mm -hmm. All of them. I was one. If, you want people, if he wants people to stencil stars on him, then he can be the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the stenciling stars would be. That's right, that's right. The last new business thing I have is um, our Mary Millersburg Christmas celebration is going to be on November 23rd. And we are looking for individuals or businesses to sponsor the window contest and purchase a trophy. So if anybody out there would like to do that, one of the things we're going to be doing is a window contest with all the businesses in town. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's interested in that, let us know. Yes. Does anyone else have any new business? Any visitors wish to address council? Okay. Do I have a motion to go into executive session to consider the appointment or compensation of a public employee or official and to consider the purchase of property for public pur purposes? Mm. Second. Owen? Aye. Offsetter? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. McConn? Aye. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening.